morning happy friday to everyone this is sunrise meditations with yours truly is pastor andre fullwood good morning everyone on iheart radio and around the world amen god has blessed the ministry to go internationally <laughs> amen glory be to god to those listening to the replay based on the time that you're listening to um <laughs> good afternoon and good evening to those of you who will catch that later amen glad to be amongst the living as, as they would say back in the day, but glory be to God for another day. Today is um, it's a short lesson, <clears throat> a short lesson today, but we're going to talk about dream killers. Amen. If you missed yesterday, if you missed pretty much ever since Tuesday, I've been coming out of the book, The Prophetic Life Formula Purpose, about the process of purpose, dreams, seasons, and promise, and it's by Prophet Daniel W. Pringle. Check him out. You can check out some of his YouTube stuff. Um, very prophetic man of God, um, very accurate uh, man of God, and um, this will bless you. Daryl, my God, how you doing, my brother? Uh, good morning, everyone, once again. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to see the the end of another work week, amen, on this Friday. Father God, we pray, oh, Heavenly Father God, that your will will be done through our lives. Father God, the God that we, even before we get started to rip and run, that we seek your kingdom and what you desire for us to do in it, Father God, that we'll take care of your business first, Father, knowing that you will take care of ours. So, God, we glorify you and we thank you, oh, Heavenly Father God. And, God, as we begin to further in the book of the Prophetic Life Formula, and as we talk about dream killers, those who try to kill and want to assassinate what you have given us and what you have predestined for us, Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that it will have no hold. It will not be successful, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. So I thank you for the birthing of what you have predestined in our bellies, oh God, that it will manifest, we will not abort it, it will not be stillborns in the name of Jesus, God, but the, for the very reason you created us, you created us with a specific design in mind, and we will fulfill that in the name of Jesus, that we will not go to the grave full, but we will go to the grave when it's that time empty, because we fulfilled everything that you had predestined in us, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So the base gen um the base scripture for today is Genesis thirty seven and eight, and it says, And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and visions. And they hated him yet the more for dreams and visions. Uh, Hate is a strong word. It expresses an emotional attitude toward persons and things which are opposed, detested, despised, and with which one wishes to have no contact or relationship. It is the opposite of love, whereas love draws and unites, hate separates and keeps distance. To be hated is, is to consider a person a foe or an enemy, utterly unappealing. And so um, I'm sure once upon a time in our life, we have went through people who will have despised us amen who hated us glory be god sometimes people hate us and don't even understand why they hate us glory be god they sometimes um they hate us for the simple fact that they don't even know they don't even know that they're being used by the enemy really to catapult us to where we need to go <laughs> glory be to god <laughs> hallelujah they don't understand that a lot of times we are being hated on and got that that the enemy is using them or god could be using them to push us out the boat to get us to where we need to go so sometimes we need some resistance sometimes we need some agitation Glory be to God to get you to do what you what what to get us to do what God needs us to do. And so to be hated by your enemy or arch rival is one thing, but to be hated by your family hmm, is another thing. Glory be to God. This was the predicament of Joseph's relationship with his brothers. He was hated for his dreams. Can you imagine somebody hating you for your dreams? Can you imagine somebody hating you for your visions for your um? For your go-to, glory be to God. Um, someone hating you because you have a mindset to move forward. You have a mindset to be successful. You have the mindset to not be normal. Glory be to God. You have a mindset to break the family dysfunction. Glory be to God. You have a mindset, glory be to God, to be all that God has called for you to be. Amen. And so you're not going to allow the um, hmm, the comments of family to dictate you to... Um, to um to detour you glory be to god even if they isolate you um, even when they get quiet when you're around glory be to god and where they can't wait for you to leave you're not going to allow you're going to love them so much that you can be around them and they can't stand you glory be to god that's when the love of god the true agape love of god is reigning in your heart when you can be around people and love them knowing that they hate you <laughs> knowing that they hate you and that you can still be around them um in their minds it was bad enough that he was a dreamer 
But what what really brought his brother's anger and disgust to another level was that he had the audacity and the sheer gall to articulate his dreams. So it's one thing to dream. Glory be to God. And what the, and what the writer is saying is that, but it was another thing that he was able to interpret his dreams. Uh, he was able to tell them what was going to happen um, in time in time to come. So there are those who will tolerate you as long as you keep your dreams to yourself. But as soon as you talk about your dreams, as soon as you put your dreams out there in the open, all of a sudden things begin to change. Their whole attitude and disposition towards you can be radically altered okay radically altered so the real reason is why why is it that there are those who hate and despise dreamers and even more thought-provoking question is this how does someone become a dream killer in all actuality there are several answers to to that one similar unanswerable question first it was jealousy people are jealous people are jealous of you but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. So why were they jealous? Prim primarily for this one reason, favor. <laughs> he had the favor of his father in his life. Sometimes many people are jealous of you because you have the favor of God on your life. Glory be to God. Sometimes they wish that when, when they hear about bad things that happen to you, they, they um, <laughs> in their silent mind, wish you were gone. They wish those things that are taking you out. But you keep overcoming you keep overcoming you keep overcoming that no matter what has happened to you you keep withstanding the assault of the enemy and so you they realize that the favor of god is on your hand they look at your past and they wonder why are you still being so successful why are you on tv why are you on radio why are you why are why is god favoring you the way you is why is it when it looked like you were down but yet you over here on the mountaintop because of the favor of god that is on you so it is said because he was favored by his father but we are favored by our heavenly father glory be to God. Why is it that certain people favor us and they're not even in our bloodline? Glory be to God. Because they see something on you. They see the favor of God that is on your life. So Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his children because Joseph had been born <coughs> to him in his old age. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. So no one so so one day Jacob had a, a special gift for Joseph, a beautiful robe, but his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. Um, there is, this is very significant. As a dreamer, you must never be surprised when someone despises you because of the father's favor in your life. Glory be to God. Because of the father's favor in your life. You may not have a college degree. You may have, you may have had a past that's been so, so atrocious that, that there's no way God would use you. And because they're not being used because they went to seminary and because they did this and because they've been, because they've been married only once and they have, and they're still married and got two beautiful kids and a white picket fence and they have all this. So they have the perfect quote unquote, um, Christian image. Glory be to God. But God chose you. He chose you when you was homeless. He chose you because you was molested or raped. He chose you because you've been divorced three or four times. He chose you because you was once an alcoholic. Maybe you was once a whoremonger. But whatever it is, God chose you. Glory be to God. He chose you in his hand. <clears throat> excuse me. And his hand of favor is upon you. And so people despise you. People hate you because they look at where you come from. And then they try to discredit what God has done in your life. Instead of understanding that, wow, God has, a, God has something mighty on them. There's something powerful that God has on their life. Because if you look at where they were and you can see where they're coming from and where they've been and where they're going something there must be a special heavy anointing on them so why not connect with them why despise them why hate them because um they don't fit into your little christian clique of of the of the perfect um i guess the perfect image there is no perfect image except jesus he's he's the only perfect image glory be to god so if, even if you look back through history god used a whole lot of people with a whole lot of baggage with a whole lot of trouble he did. <clears throat> so, true dream is the one who dream outside of their own ability and beyond the limits of their own natural potential are dreamers who must have the favor of the Heavenly Father in and over their lives. The Heavenly Father will birth dreams within you which require his favor in order for them to manifest and materialize. Here, his favor is the key. Without the favor of the Heavenly Father, the dreams he had given you would never happen. The reality is God designed your dreams to depend on him. You get that, God? Your dreams that come from heaven, that come from the Father, only can be manifested because when you depend on him. When you don't depend on him, when you, when you walk wayward from his word, then those dreams will not become a reality. 
Okay, they would not become a reality. So when you have when you have a God designed dream, it would only materialize through his favor and faithfulness. God will give you a dream, but then he will make sure the only way it would come through come true is through him. Therefore, when it manifests, he gets all the glory. Hmm. Like it or not, there are times when God's favor in your life will breed contempt and hatred from others. So think it not strange. Amen. Think it not strange that when you start having favor with God. And God favors you and he's giving you dreams and he's giving the interpretations of your dreams. Do not be surprised when people begin to despise you. Okay? They begin to despise you. So, favor is the number one key. The second dream, dream killers are threatened dealing with the disturbing reality that somehow someone else, great dream, someone else's great dreams throws light on a, on a deficiency in them. My God. Your dreams. <clears throat> Can shine light on someone else's deficiency. A character flaw in them. A lack of drive and determination in them. They are actually threatened. By the dreamer. So most of them. You, you can have people who are afraid of you. Because you dream. And what you dream shines light on their flaws. It draws light on their shortcomings. Okay. And it's out of that mindset and mentality. That they begin to act and react. Someone who feels threatened is hostile and hateful. Mean and nasty. So as you dream, or matter of fact, if someone tells you about a dream and you're able to interpret it and it relates to something or where they're at, they may not like you because how you interpret it, because they may think it's something that could be favorable and it's not. So when Joseph shared his dream, his brothers felt threatened when he insinuated that he would be superior over them and that they would submit to his authority. His brothers responded and spoke out of their insecurities and lack of self worth. Okay, he was already hated because he was loved more because, you know, Rachel was Jacob's, um, that was his heart. And so she birthed him a son at his, at, 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 an old, at an old age that he was. And so he favored Jacob. He favored himself. You know, I know we all have kids. Most of who have kids and we say that we don't have no favorites. But somewhere deep inside, there's one that you favor a little bit more than the other ones. Even though you try to treat them all the same, there's someone that they may do may do they may do things that's more pleasing to you, and it just brings you more joy than what the other ones do. And so we may we may not admit that we have favorites, but there's some that you may admonish a little bit more than others. Um, you may go a little bit more out the way for other ones, and so. But we want to keep it balanced. But kids can see, children can see who who favors who more. Okay, so you can't hide it. So most dream killers, no matter how confident they may seem on the outside, are actually wrestling and grappling with their own feelings of of an in oh, excuse me of oh, their own feelings of inadequacy on the inside. It is from a, it is from a place of deep pain, from that place of frustration that they begin to lash out. More often than not, dream killers are people who are filled with and fueled by great and intense pain. There's something going on inside of them, people. <laughs> There's something going inside of them that causes them to feel so inadequate that they begin to lash out on you. So it's really not you. A lot of times it's what's going on inside of them that they don't like or they can't grab a hold of and then they lash out toward you. They hate you. They want to be where you are. They're wondering why they can't have the things that you have. They're wondering why the favor of God is not on you. They wonder, they wonder the favor of God is not on them, but it's on you. They're wondering why, how you have bad credit, but you got everything that you want because your father keeps giving it to you and people keep blessing you. They, they, it, it begins to irritate their soul. So you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And that's Genesis 37. And eight. So it is possible to understand the dream killers without first attempting to understand their pain. Virtually every time Joseph's brothers laid eyes on him, they felt pain. They felt the pain of being less than him, the pain of not measuring up to him, the pain of feeling inferior to him. So when people see you and they hate you and they despise you, what is it? What is it about? What is it that's going on that makes them feel the way they do towards you? What is it about them? What is it about their insecurity? Maybe they have an identity crisis. We talked about that yesterday. Maybe they have an identity crisis. And because you know who you are and whose you are, and you going forth and knowing that you're, you know your purpose, you know the timing, you're in sync with God, maybe they're jealous of you just because of that fact. Maybe they're envious of you. Maybe they, maybe they really want to know how, you know how you connect with God the way you do, but they're too afraid to ask. 
Maybe. Maybe they think, maybe pride is risen up in them, and they think that they should have more than what you have, but they don't. So in order to ease, ease their own pain, they begin to plot and ploy the literal, the, the literal devastation and death, not only of the dream, but shamefully the dreamer. So dominated and derailed by pain and frustration, jealous and envy, they became, a, they be, um, they became assignment assassins and dream killers. They became assignment assassins and dream killers. So there's times where people not only want to kill your dreams, but they want to kill you. They want to kill the dreamer. Okay, they want to kill the visionary. Um, they don't want you around anymore. They don't want you to to live. They don't want you to exist anymore. They are out to take you out. They're plotting and they're planning and wanting your downfall. So remember now, his brothers hated him for his dreams and for his words. In the original language of the Old Testament, this is extremely intense and strong. The word hated here in the book of Genesis is the Hebrew word sane, S-A-N-E. Um, this word hate from the original translation means to hate and to be hateful. It is literally hatred in action. Hatred in action. So, their hatred was put on display each and every day. The Bible says that his brothers couldn't say a kind word to him. So, have you ever been around people that every time, every time they see you come around, they're murmuring and they're complaining. They're talking about you. They're backstabbing you. Their souls is irritated just at your presence. Their very soul is irritated just at your presence. Dream haters. They hate you. <laughs> Can't stand you. They even you could be in the same town. And what what if you had a what if you had a social event where most people gather together and, and, and maybe you may cross friends or whatever the case may be, and they're hoping you don't show up. Or if you show up, you just you just distorted their whole fun. They are irritated the whole time at the event because your presence is there. Because they hate the dreams. They hate that the Father has favor on you. They hate that you're still standing. They hate that you overcome. They hate that you always have a good perspective on life. They hate that you're going around inspiring people to be the best that they can be. They just hate you because of their own low self-esteem, their, their low self-worth. Because of envy, because of jealousy, because of pride. They took every opportunity to be cruel and they thoroughly and completely despised him. His everyday misery became their everyday policy. Every day they were out. And their hearts were full of hatred toward Joseph. Every day they looked at him. They just got sick to their stomach. So third, dream killers hate the fact that you have a destiny and they do not. Catch that. Dream killers hate the fact that you have a destiny and they do not. The startling reality is this, that what they hated most was not his dreams or even his words or the obvious favor of the father over his life. Their most intense hatred was not even reserved for only him alone. What they hated most was his destiny. People don't like it when you know where you're going. <laughs> Some people don't like it when they when you know where you're going, when you're so determined in life to 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 fulfill the purpose that God has designed in your life that people cannot stand you. And they hate you just for that simple fact. They hate some and sometimes people hate you because you don't need them to get to where you need to go. You're not looking for them, you're not relying on them. They think that you can't make it without them. Maybe you may not have the resources, but they have the resources, so they think you cannot get to where you're going. But I'm going to tell you this, that whatever you say yes to God, God is obligated to provide every provision for you. And he will give you the power to get it done. Hebrews 13 and 21, one of my favorite scriptures. So whenever you you know that God is calling you to, to a specific thing, and when you say yes to God, he is obligated to provide the provision. He is obligated to provide the provision. And to give you the dunamis power to get it done. Why? Because when we say yes to God. When we say yes to God. Amen Martin. When we say yes to God. We please God. Because we want to do his will. It's just that simple. And it's just that plain. When we can understand and truly comprehend. That when God is when God is calling on you to do something. That he's already putting you anyway. He's already put it in you. But when you say yes to him. It pleases him. 
So how do we please the Father? Do His will. Just say yes to His will. And He is obligated. He's obligated. I'm telling you. He's obligated to bring you through. People will come and give and they'll do whatever that is needed for the assignment that God has for you. Because you know why? Because God will touch the hearts of those to give unto you. To bless you. To help aid you in whatever you need. To fulfill his will. It's not yours. It's his. So we always have to make sure that whatever we say yes to God, we have to make sure that God gets the glory. We have to make sure God gets the glory. It is nothing that we've done our own. So why in the world did they despise his destiny so much? The answer is surprisingly simple. It is because they perceived that his destiny was greater than theirs. <laughs> they hated him so much because they felt that his destiny was greater than him, greater than his, greater than their, their brothers. People will despise you because they think that the greatness that is on you is greater than theirs. And that's what brings the jealousy and the envy and the strife. Okay? We have people who are full of hatred and jealousy because of what you do. No matter what profession that you're in. They're jealous of you. So they recognize something about him um, he may not have ever recognized at him it recognized is himself at that time. It was obvious to them that something was different about Joseph. After all, he was not required to tend the sheep work in the fields, or long days in the hot sun. So soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to went to, to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready, and I will send you to them. And that's Genesis 37, 12 through 13. So to them, Joseph was a daddy's boy. That's right. <laughs> Joseph was a daddy's boy. He was he was a he was a chosen one. After all, his fingernails were never dirty. He did not break a sweat, carry a load, or work a day in his life. No, he got to hang around dad. And if he was a prominent figure, royalty, you might say, and was reserved to accomplish dad's witch list, like run errands and deliver messages of his father. They saw the handwriting on the wall. Joseph was being groomed to be something extraordinary, not a farmer like them. He was being groomed. So can you imagine? You got all your brothers out here working the field, laboring in the hot sun. And, and then pretty old baby boy gets to hang out with daddy all day. And he's coming giving us messages. And then has the audacity to come give us a dream. And then interpret and saying that we're going to serve you. That would anger somebody. It would anger some brothers, I'm sure. So deep, in, so deep down inside their own hearts, they knew um, his dreams could actually be fulfilled. Why else would? Why else were they so threatened by him? So threatened that they were willing to kill him. Um, their own insecurity caused them to declare war on his destiny. It can be a terrifying season in your life when someone declares war on your destiny. It is terrible. That can be a terrible time when you're out there and you're you're doing what you believe God's called for you to do, and then people are trying to destroy you. For what God has put inside of you. People will try to destroy you. Or they will try to discredit you. For the very reason that you exist. Because you found out your purpose. And you know your destiny. So at times you may have to endure the great and intense attack of a dream killer. However that attack actually proves something very powerful. Your dream killers believe in you. Hmm. Write that down. I need you to write that down. Your dream. Why else would they attack you if they didn't believe in your dreams? They believe in you. That's why they're attacking you. Dream killers only fight who and what they believe in. Those who may be fighting you the hardest and resisting you the most are only doing so because they believe in you. Let the revelation sink in. Your most intense attacks come from those who believe in you. Even when you may think you cannot, they think you can. Hmm. So in a strange way, you can receive and find comfort and encouragement by the presence of a dream killer. Because the presence of a dream killer can actually be a sign that you are on the right track and the best is yet to come. So when you have a great destiny, the enemy will always send dream killers to try to disrupt um, dream killers to try disrupting, delaying, and even destroying that destiny. So Joseph was hated. And the hatred Joseph endured so much more than just a superficial, openly 
um, non-aggressive kind of threat that exists just under the surface. Hatred like that is disgusted. I mean, hatred like that is, is disguised by sarcastic um, smiles and smirks. These kind of haters are the most common and hate on the down low and they do it undercover. They lack the intentional fortitude or just plain guts to express outwardly what beats so strongly in their hearts. So you have people who hate you, but they'll, they'll, say, they'll say things on the slide or um, they'll, they'll try to carry a conversation with you. But, but in, and then they'll give snide remarks um, trying to discourage you or, or you can sense that they hate what you're doing. Um, or, or they'll try to throw in their own opinion about, um, matter of fact, they may even try to question, are you sure that's what God's called you to do? Okay. So these are the people who, who act nice to your face and then talk about you behind your back. Joseph, however, dealt with much more savage kind of hatred. A hatred that was totally unhidden, up close and personal. Jason had to contend with the hatred that was right out in the open. And his, and his hatred was from, from no one other than his own family. And, and ironically and oftentimes, painfully, the enemy will use those closest to you to destroy your dream. So not so much in proximity, but in relationship. People, people that we have heart ties with. Um, it can be a tragic thing. It can be a tragic thing when a family member takes on the role of a dream killer. Someone who should have, have your back because the one who stabs you in the back. The one who should have your back becomes the one who stabs you in your back. So this is the source of perhaps the greatest pain of all when the people you love the most hate you for your dreams the most. Okay, people that you think should support you, the people that you, that you believe loved you are the ones that hate you for striving for the things that you do. They can't stand you. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? They hate you because you don't have time to waste on gossip. They hate you because you don't have time to join the little family um, hangouts and things like that because you have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a goal. You have dreams that you have to fulfill. So all those things, so sometimes you have to miss the little family out. Because all, what are they doing anyway? They're drinking, they're cussing, they're doing whatever they want to do anyway. And then they're going to talk about you anyway because they think that you're better than them because you bought your you bought your father's business. Okay, so what's the sense of going anyway to torment yourself? Or what's the sense of going? And, I, and they're not talking about nothing. They're not doing nothing. Everybody's doing the same old thing. So tell you what, when you go, stay for a half hour. Show your face. Okay, I got to go. Because I'm purpose driven. People that are not purpose driven, all they do is hang out and do the same thing over and over and over again. They don't do nothing. You can be gone from your hometown for 10, 12 years. You come back home and you still, still see people doing the same thing. They're not purpose driven. They're not purpose driven. Uh so what do I do when I love my dream killer? Hmm. Do I choose my dream or do I choose my dream killer? Do I abandon my God-given dream or do I abandon my dream killer? Even though I may love them, what price am I willing to pay for my dream? What if my dream costs me everything? Not everyone is going to be happy with your dreams. Based upon Joseph's story, dream killers possess three basic qualities that cause them to hate you. Three basic qualities. One is jealousy. One is jealousy. Two, they are threatened. Okay? And three is your destiny. They hate you because they, they hate you because um, they're jealous. They hate you because they're threatened by your dreams. And they, they hate you just simply because you have a destiny. So what are you going so what are you to do when dream killers face you? What are you to do when dream killers face you? Be prepared. Number one, be prepared. Even though who, even those who pose as your friends, such as co-workers, and yes, even your family members may turn against you when you when you dream, when you begin to dream. Like a snake in the grass, they may strike at any time, ready to unleash venom that could potentially expose the dream killer in them. So be prepared. Number two, be alert. Expect opposition. <laughs> Expect opposition. Okay, 
You will, you will feel it first because it manifests. Trust your discernment. Trust your gut feelings. Despite the reality of resistance, um, don't keep yourself from following through on your dream just to please others. Okay? When you see it coming, do not stop. Do not stop pursuing your dreams. Okay? Trust that gut feeling. Trust that discernment. Trust the Holy Spirit. Number three, protect your dreams. Protect your dreams. Um, step away from relationships when you suspect a person is a dream killer. Keep a distance until the dream killer fades from your life and, and influences your decision. Okay, sometimes we can get caught up with people and we trust. Um, we, we begin to trust their influence. But the influence is against your dreams. You need to, um, you need to start backing away from them. Okay. Um, number four, create an environment. Create an environment. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals that will support your dreams and never kill it. Hang around like-minded people that will support your dream and never kill it. Uh, number five, stay on course. Stay on course. Many times people forsake their dreams because they don't want to break away from a soul tie relationship. Hoping that eventually they would change their mind about your dream because you picked them instead of your dream. Stay the course. Okay? Stay the course. If you have to break soul ties, do what you have to do. Obey God. Obey the assignment that God has given you. Okay? Um, pursue with passion. Number six, pursue with passion. Go ahead and keep chasing your dream, even if others disapprove. Your dream is your destiny. Your dream is your destiny. And number seven, expect pain. Expect some pain, my God. Realize you will not please everyone when you accomplish your dream. Opposition is an ingredient of a dream killer. Opposition is an ingredient of a dream killer. So the fulfillment of Joseph's dreams cost him everything. Everything he knew and for a season, everyone he knew. It, however, becomes crystal clear as you study the life of Joseph that on some level he finally understood his dream killers. He must have in some significant way comprehended their pain. Because of that, he never allowed himself to be dominated and controlled by bitterness. And when you read the story of Joseph, you you never hear it described of his feelings of you never hear you never hear it described of his ill feelings toward his brothers. Not once. And so we have to take that note that even though we may see them and maybe know and, and we and we recognize who is out to kill our dreams. Don't allow your heart to get bitter. Don't be resentful. Don't be hateful. Don't do it. Just continue to love on them, but you got to keep it moving. You have to keep it moving. Don't allow your heart to get stones of malice and anger and resentment and unforgiveness and all that. Don't, don't do it. Okay? We have to remind ourselves like Jesus did on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not what to do because if they really knew uh, what they were doing, they would understand that they have a destiny too. They would understand that they have a purpose too. And they would they would understand that if they begin to seek the Father and spend time with them, that the Father would give them dreams and visions just as well as you have them. Okay? They're so worried about who's going to be the greatest. Okay? They're worried about who's going to be the greatest. My thing is just do what God's called you to do because no matter what level He's called you to do, it's great because it's His. It's his. Okay? It is his. Anything that you do for God is great. We're just so concerned about um, our natural eyes and how many people we can influence, how many followers we have, what kind of platform, what kind of platform we're going to be on, or what kind of platform God's going to put us on. But if you go back to the very beginning, if you go back to I think Tuesday's lesson, and we talked about it was only it was only um eleven day journey. Was the distance to get to the promised land. But God led them 40 years. Because he had to drive out all the slavery mentality. That they had. So God is not going to promote you. He's not going to take you to the next level. Until one you humble yourself. Two. Um, you have to be proven that you can handle. What he has for you. And then three he has to qualify you. So if you keep waiting for promotion from God. You have to first. He has to first take you through the process. So you have to be able to go through the process in order for you to go into that next level of God. Because otherwise, if you allow man to promote you and elevate you before God does, you're going to end up and you're going to mess some things up. You're going to mess some things up. 
Okay. So the concept of, bit of mental bitterness comes from the idea of something that has a sharp or unpleasant taste. We speak of something being bitter if it causes grief or is hard to bear. A bitter defeat, a bitter failure. We almost speak of a bitter loss when someone's death has caused great grief. So when you allow bitterness to enter into the equation, you lose every time. Bitterness is neither consistent nor rational. A bitter person is his own worst enemy. It is very difficult to maintain any kind of relationship with a chronicle bitter, with a chronically bitter person. And bitterness is ma is a major contributing cause of a marital and family problems. The moment we become overwhelmed by bitterness, the slow and painful death of our dreams begin to take place. So it is obvious that Joseph loved that Joseph loved his family, and he somehow lived above bitterness because in the end his dream provided a place for them all so there's no way it would have happened for him and his family if he lived in a place of bitterness okay that's it that's all i have <laughs> so if you miss anything i need you to go back and catch the replay um monday we're going to talk about the pit we're going to talk about the pit remember when when his brothers um they put him in a pit um, some great, great revelation about that, and I'm going to share with that with you on Monday morning. Um, if you want to know where I'm coming from out of this teaching, it is called The Prophetic Life Formula. Um, it's by Daniel Pringle. He's a prophet. He's out of Texas. Um, awesome man of God. Great, great book. Um, I think this is my second time really teaching out of this book. Um, so it's great, great stuff. So we're going to talk about the pit. Uh, then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. There's some great revelation about the pit. So you don't, don't want to miss this. Glory be to God. You don't want to miss it. And so I'm going to thank you for each and every one of you who's tuning in. And once again, good afternoon and good evening to those who will catch the replay. Um, enjoy your weekend. Have a blessed time. Um, if you like, glory to God, if you've been blessed um, by the ministry, amen, Kim, Kim is, um, Kingdom Empowerment and Equipment Ministries. If you like to sow, if you're growing where you sow, they say sow where you grow. So, if you feel that you're growing and you're gaining some things, um, some some knowledge, then uh, feel free to sell. Amen. I'm putting the information up on the screen right now. And so, there you have it. If you want to sell, God's leading you to sell. Matter of fact, if you want to be a, mar a monthly partner in supporting the ministry that God is having us, we are launching um, Kingdoms Ministers Institute. Apostle, I see you just came on. I have to get you that email today. Um, but we're going to launch Kingdom Ministers Institute in the month of May. So, you're going to start seeing a lot of advertisement for that. That ministry is to um, to teach people, um, those who've been, who believe they've been called to the ministry, um, um, the weight of the call of being a minister, being called by God, making sure that you know that you know that you know um, that you're pregnant with the calling. That's what my former pastor said to me. That um, when I told him that I believe I've been called to the ministry, and after I explained everything to him, he said, "Yep, you're pregnant." And so I want to make sure that you understand. Matter of fact, I want to make sure that you get some things that I did not get coming up in the ministry that I believe would have helped me. But here I am now, and so God has laid that on my heart. So it's called KMI, Kingdom Ministers Institute. So begin, um, be prepared for that. Um, it's um, four eight-week segments, very intense. Um, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of um, activation that's going to go on. Also, what is, it's very affordable, very, very affordable. Um, each segment is eight weeks, three classes um, per night, three classes a night. Amen. And so it's just like going to college. You know, you're going to take three courses. And so once a week for eight weeks, and then we're going to take a break. And then we come back and we finish. In the end, in the end, those of you who really believe that you've been called to the ministry, um, you will be ordained. Amen. You'll be ordained as a licensed elder and an ordained elder. And you'll be able to go forth and do the things. So we want to make sure that by the time you leave, that we want to know that you, uh, whatever your gifts are, because we want to help perfect you in your gifting areas. And then you'll be covered. Amen. You'll be covered in prayer. You know, we're really like a covenant partner to you. Amen. So that wherever you go, no matter throughout the United States or the world, glory be to God that you will have um, a covenant partner that we will pray for you in whatever way we can assist you. Glory be to God. This is not something that you have to pay annually. Glory be to God. You're called. You're called. I mean, I've been through so many ordinations because I've been through so many different organizations. It is just crazy. So here, once you're ordained, you are ordained. Amen. And we are here and then we'll have more courses 
going forth as well to further um, your education. So this is something that God has birthed in me. Amen. And so we are going to launch it. Um, and actually, we're going to have it at the Ministry House of Kingdom Empowerment Equipment Ministries in the city of Greer. And it's probably going to be Tuesday nights, I believe, for right now. I was going to do Monday nights. But then my spiritual father decides to have <laughs> a house Bible study. And so I got to I gotta pray about that and talk to him about that. But um, it's probably going to be between Monday night and Tuesday night from 6 to 9.20 in the evening. So each class is like 50 minutes each, and then we'll take a... We'll take a break, we'll do a chapel, we'll do some praying, do some activation, um, and then we'll come back and finish one more class. And then after eight weeks, we'll close that session out, take two weeks off, and then we'll come back again. And so because of the summer, we'll probably take July and August off and then pick it back up in September. So be looking for that information. Um, so it's going to be some great, great, uh, it's a great time of fellowship. Uh, we're going to learn, we're going to grow together. Amen. We're going to be activated in gifts. Um, you're going to learn how to, you're going to learn how to write a sermon for, say, a funeral for someone that's unsafe, someone that is safe. You're going to know how to go through communion. Now, everybody go does communion differently, you know, the way, you know, we, we, we serve it all the same, but there's different formats people do. Um, how about doing a baby dedication? How about walking a family in doing a, doing a uh, funeral service? Um, so those things that you would get hands on so that when you're called and when, you know, people summons you to, to do those things, you won't be fresh out the gate. You at least have some experience in those. So those are some of the activation things that we will do. Um, so it's so much, a lot of work, papers to write, all those things. So yeah, I'm gonna work you hard, <laughs> but if you want to know and you want to be able to, um, to get in, especially on this first, this first session, um, you don't want to miss it. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Once again, if you like to sew, um, then feel free, um, cash app or PayPal keem10319 at gmail.com. So I love you guys. Take care. Thank you for listening to Sunrise Meditations. As God's Word has shed light on your path, situation, and circumstance, may it continue to strengthen your relationship with God and see your faith grow as God reveals more of who He is to you. Apostle Andre can be contacted at andrefullwood.com. Join us every morning, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday, Eastern Time, for Sunrise Meditations.